Good morning, Mount Olivet family. Glad you could be here today as we get close to celebrating Thanksgiving. This is the Sunday before. I hope you're getting all your prep done. I know I'm getting ready to start taking my turkey out to thaw, maybe making some dumplings ahead of time. But all that goes with our message today in the idea of being prepared. So as we go through this, we'll begin with our Old Testament passage. We're going to look at the book of Judges, Judges chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. Our prayer psalm today is Psalm 123. And our New Testament passage today is First, Thess First Thessalonians 5, verses 1 through 11. As again, we look at the idea of being prepared. Before we get into all that, just a few quick announcements. Today is also Covenant Giving Sunday. So we thank you for your gifts. We thank you for your continued support. To let you know what it all does here, the covenant giving helps us not only set our budget so we can keep the lights and the heat on, but also to help us do those outreach ministries that we love to do. Our VBS, our father-daughter dance, to help work with the preschool to do the hot chocolate and the gingerbread houses, all of that. Your covenant giving helps support it. So we thank you for that. If you need forms or you would like to turn in yours, please call the office. We have them readily available. So before we get into all that, and again, you're going to hear my son in the background as always because he's there playing. He's having a good old time. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Eternal God, we thank you and we praise you that we can gather here today to hear how you want us to be prepared. And in doing so, let us be ready for the work you have to call for us. We ask all this in your most holy name. Amen. So Judges 4, verses 1 through 7. Again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. Now that Yuhid, or Ehud, was dead. So the Lord sold them into the hands of Jabin, king of Canaan. Who, re <clears throat> who reigned in Hazor. Sisera, the commander of his army, was based in Harso excuse me, Haroseth. I got a little frog in my throat this morning. Because he had 900 chariots fitted with iron and had cruelly oppressed the Israelites for 20 years, they cried to the Lord for help. Now Deborah, a prophet, the wife of Lapodith, was leading Israel at that time. She held court under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the Israelites went up to her to have their disputes decided. She sent for Barak, son of Abonim, from Kedesh in Naphtali, and said to him, The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, Go, take with you 10,000 men of Naphtali and Zebulun, and lead them to Mount Tabor. I will lead Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his troops to the Kishon River, and give them into your hands. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us give thanks. Our prayer psalm today is Psalm 123. It's a song of ascents titled, Our Eyes Look to the Lord, Our God. At any time, please feel free to pause, take time, and seek God in prayer. To you I lift up my eyes, O you who are enthroned in the heavens. Behold, as the eyes of the servants look to, your hand, to the hand of their master, as the eyes of a maidservant to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God, till he has mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, O Lord. Have mercy upon us, for we have made, <clears throat> excuse me, for we have had more than enough of contempt. Our soul has had more than enough of the scorn of those who are, were at ease, of the contempt of the proud. Again, please feel free to pause, take time, and seek God in prayer. Our New Testament passage today comes from 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 1 through 11, as we look at the idea of be prepared and how, as Paul is writing this, he is telling us to be ready for the seasons. 
but we can use this for any time. So 1 Thessalonians 5, beginning in verse 1, we read, Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the, thief in the night. While people are saying there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman and they will not escape. But you are not in darkness, brothers, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are children of the light, children of the day. We are not of night or darkness. So then, let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for the helmet of hope and salvation. For God has not descended us to wrath. Excuse me, God has not destined us for wrath but to obtain salvation for our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up one another, just as you are doing. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us give thanks. So in this passage, Paul is talking about what is to come. And as we sit and listen to this, or as we're having it in church this Sunday, we know what's about to come. Thanksgiving. Now, if you can't tell, it's my favorite holiday. Mainly because I love not just the getting together. But I love being able to sit around the table and talk and fellowship. That's one of the things I loved about the tailgate this past Sunday. We all just sat around the table eating and talking, sharing. But a lot of preparation goes into Thanksgiving. A lot of preparation went into the tailgate. You have to get all the food together. You have to delegate who's going to do what. Thankfully for the tailgate, we had Mike Covey on the grill. If you've ever had his chicken, you know why you want him on the grill. The same with our Thanksgiving traditions. We all might have that one family member who can make desserts better than you can buy in any restaurant. Or we have the one who does the turkey just right so that breast is nice and moist. The dark meat is tender. And it is so good that there's barely any leftovers. We delegate those things to people who can handle them. Because let's face it, if you put me on desserts, it's not going to be a good Thanksgiving. But I'll take that turkey, I'll, turkey, I'll throw it in the smoker and just let it go. The same comes when we are called to different ministries. Right now, as I sit and record this, our sandwich ladies are up making sandwiches to take over to Love Inc. I can do that. That's easy. But that's what they're called to. It's easier for them. They have it delegated out. Who brings this this week? Who brings this next week? They know exactly how to be prepared for what's to come. Paul tells us in this passage, he said, you don't need to have anything written for you. Because you're ready. Those who aren't ready, it's going to come like a thief in the night. So he tells us, let's be awake and be of clear mind. Meaning, don't let anything cloud our judgment. Don't let anything block what we're thinking, our time with the Lord, so that we are ready. There's times we might need rest to be ready. There's times we might need to just be in prayer to be ready. And there's times we might need to listen to be ready. In the, in the prophecy of Zephaniah, he tells us in chapter 1, verse 7, be listening, or excuse me, 7, verse 1. Be silent and listening. So our time of prayer, we can listen. Paul continues on in this passage by talking about putting on the breastplate of armor, the helmet, the shield. We all know this as the gospel armor when we were kids. In fact, and I hope this picture never resurfaces. When I was working with the youth group in Virginia, there's a picture of them taking like the little kid's armor, you know, the shield that's about this big, the breastplate about this big, and duct taping it to me because that's the only way we could get it to stay on. And while the image sticks out clear in anybody's head, it gets the point across that we need to be prepared. 
as someone who went through Boy Scouts all the way up to, I think I was a um, star. I need to go back and check all my badges. The motto of the Boy Scouts helps us every single day. Be prepared. Prepared for what? Well, it doesn't matter. Paul tells us in this passage to be prepared because when it comes, it comes like a thief in the night or like labor pains that just come on suddenly. So we need to take time and be prepared. Just like we're going to take time this week and make the dumplings ahead of time. I know my sister-in-law does some amazing dumplings. Or we're going to start thawing and brining the turkey. Or some of us might pre-make the rolls or get them ready just to go in the oven at the last minute. So we have hot, fresh rolls on the table. We have a lot to be prepared for as believers. We are called to be in constant prayer, to be well-rested. Sometimes it's easier than others. But most importantly, be ready for when he calls us, because that day is coming. Whether it's to call us to a new ministry, call us to a new field, call us to a new walk with him, or to call us home to him. We need to be ready. So as we get the turkey out, as we make the dressing, or stuffing, if you call it that. I'm from the South. We do pans of dressing. Or if you're just the person who's in charge of hosting. So cleaning the house, getting the good china out, getting the placemats set. Let us take time this week to not just be prepared for family and friends, but be prepared for the call that he has on our lives. Pray with me. Eternal God, we thank you and we praise you that you have called us to be prepared. And in doing so, you strengthen and encourage us. Let us take time this week as we not only prepare for family and friends, but we prepare for what you have called us to. We ask all this in your most holy name. Amen. I want to thank you for joining me today. I hope wherever you are, you are safe, you are healthy, and that God has blessed you in some way today. Take care.